Hello everybody, my name is Matt Bancroft. I'm one of the technical team here at Concurrent Engineering. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join us for what I hope will be an interesting half hour, taking a look at some of the new exciting features introduced in Creo 10. Creo 10 builds on the class leading features which we know and expect from PTC's flagship CAD package with a selection of improvements and exciting new technical capabilities that will give you and your team a dependable, easy to use and high quality solution to your product design and development. The splash screen in Creo 10 and indeed the promotional material introducing it has front and center a beautifully designed aircraft designed in the UK by one of Concurrent Engineering's customers, Hill Helicopters. We're extremely proud to be working with Hill Helicopters, providing them with technical advice and support. As you'll see from the short video following this, they chose Creo Parametric and Windchill as their software solution. So whatever scale and whatever requirements you have, from a single user startup to an established multinational, Concurrent Engineering have the experience, the technical knowledge to support you. Now in a few minutes I'll be showing you some of the new features to be found in Creo 10. But firstly please just sit and enjoy this short film. Thank you. So welcome to Hill Helicopters. I'm Jason Hill and I'm the uh, owner and founder of the business. The immediate vision is a 335,000 square foot factory employing 500 people making 500 helicopters a, a year uh, with a, a range of scalable technologies that allow us to make bigger and more sophisticated helicopters and ultimately other types of aircraft as well. When you're designing an aircraft, you start with what you want the aircraft to be, what you want it to do. So in, in our case, I wanted the ability to take five 95 kilo passengers, three hours of fuel, and fly at 140 knots. My name's Craig Jones. I'm lead mechanical engineer here at Hill Helicopters. Jason knew what he wanted. He knew what the helicopter wanted to perform like, um, and he had the engine set in his mind. So from those, almost very basic points, you can start to uh, grow a design really. You can take those and you can start laying out the bones of the design. So you're all, always trying to push the limits of what you can do. And then tools like MathCAD really help you quickly iterate designs uh, and, and get to a point where you can start to, to scheme things up. Our CAD system, Creo, linked up to Windchill, our PLM system, really gives us complete control over everything we do. We're building a, an organization to manufacture approved aircraft to the tightest standards on, on planet Earth. And that means that our business processes, our change control processes, bills of materials, everything that goes into controlling what happens at every level of the business is of vital importance to us. We've got so many things that have technical risk associated with them. And you want all of the, the things that you're building on to be solid. And what, what PTC and what Creo offers is a really robust, proven CAD system that we can rely on. And it's expandable, it'll grow with us. It's got all of the, the wind chill and the, the PLM facilities that allow us to lock down all of the control that we need of our data, to go through all of the approvals that are along the road for us. You need your tools just to be there in your toolbox when you need them and not to let you down. And, and that's really how we see Creo and PTC. Once we had more than two users, I said, We've got to get Winchell in place just to manage that CAD data. And it's, it's just seamless, which is exactly what you want. With all of these things, it's vital that we, we keep the costs down. You find that the, the subscription model, rather than, than having to buy it outright, is, is a great help for, for people in our stage of development. There's a number of factors that go into making HX50 the, the way it is. So you start with a tadpole because that's really efficient aerodynamically and you put all the right bits in the right places and try and work out how to hide them. When I started, we were using a, a different CAD system. However, with my uh, experience, I knew that that CAD system wouldn't be able to handle the large complex models that I knew we were going to produce for this product. So I made the recommendation to 
uh, moved to Creo. I know that Creo is excellent for use in large assemblies as well as uh, a great servicing tool. Uh, which, which we need here. It's also great at helping us to engineer the product, not just draw it up. It's been really refreshing to see a company of their size not only invest heavily in Creo, which is a world-class CAD tool, but also to have the foresight to lay down PLM as a backbone to their product development process. I think when we're looking for, for new people to, to work with, we select businesses, partners and staff in, in much the same way. Uh, we found the most effective way to do that over the years is really to go on trusted relationships. So uh, Concurrent were really brought to us by our existing staff that had worked with them in previous businesses and previous roles and spoke very highly about their, their level of technical competence, their ability to respond and the relationships that they'd established over many years with the key engineers and service people within the, the organisation. So for us it's a, it was a no-brainer because we, we already knew that they were going to be able to, to deliver for us so they could come and hit the ground running. Concurrent have, have worked with us to develop a, a scope of work that was set largely by our certification team around the requirements of the, the CAA, EASA and, and other aviation authorities and then develop those into deliverable processes that work within the windchill environment to allow us to deliver highly controlled, high quality components, subsystems and ultimately aircraft. The more simulation you can do at all stages of the design means that you need less testing and you can bring your, your product to market quicker. Importantly for us, it gives us a higher uh, level of confidence that the expensive tests that we do, we pass. We're a new business and we want to work in as modern a way as possible. What we are doing is using a lot of model-based definition in our design and that will follow through from our CAM software and our CMM software and it will all tie together. So Concurrent Engineering have helped us with that uh, roadmap view of where we can get to. They've given us a, a very clear overview of what we can achieve long term, but they don't want to hit us with every single configuration under the sun initially because it's just too much work, it's too, too burdensome on, on a small company. So very helpfully they've, they've broken it down in stages for us. So the first stage was a CAD management tool uh, which has been working really well. The second stage we're going to now is, is bomb management and change control. So that will allow us to meet CAA requirements for controlling our product to the level we need to. And then from that point onwards, there are lots of other tools in the suite that we can look to, and it's something they know is on the roadmap for the future. Here at Concurrent, we're excited to share with you the numerous improvements included in the most recent release, Creo 10. Creo 10 adds design for composites capabilities, as well as new electrification and ergonomics. Design engineers can use the usability and productivity improvements every day, helping to deliver better products faster. Model-based definition enhancements will increase quality and communication with production partners and downstream supply chain. And Creo 10 continues to add capabilities in terms of simulation-driven design and generative design to help you take your product development process to the next level. And finally, there are improvements in advanced manufacturing, including both additive and subtractive, to help you use the latest production capabilities. Across many industry sectors, there's an increased demand from our customers for the support in the design and manufacturing of composite products. There are many reasons why we're seeing this shift. There may be a move to more lightweight designs. Perhaps it's more for sustainability reasons, environmental reasons, or emerging manufacturing technologies that are making the process more streamlined. So you need a specialist tool or set of tools that focus on this particular area that give you the language, the requirements and the inspection devices that this process requires. Composite products offer a lightweight and sustainable material solution. For companies in many different industry sectors, aerospace, automotive of course, 
but also companies that build boats or wind turbine blades for example. As a very average cyclist I also know of the technology involved in cycling design – frames, forks etc. Creo 10 brings two new extensions – Composite Design Extension and Composite Design Advanced Extension. The Advanced Extension will benefit companies that have a higher rate of production and more advanced workflows when designing and managing composite materials. The Base Extension will still offer the tools to create plies and cores, giving a clear view to manage layers of multiple material types – for example Kevlar, fiberglass, carbon fibre. Creo 10's comprehensive and easy to use curve creation tools give you the ability to define the boundaries of plies and cores. The management of transitions between plies is also an intrinsic element in composite design. Creo's extensions give you the ability to create cross sections and see the individual plies within the structure, so you get an easily readable and logical representation of your work. The colour coding and the ability to create a solid geometry representation including full mass properties is invaluable. Further tools including structural simulation and flattened previews give you the confidence to ensure your designs are correct and real world ready. All in all, a very exciting and welcome addition to the Creo suite of technical solutions. There's also a substantial move towards electrification in many industry areas. Of course, in the automotive sectors, whether car, bikes or commercial vehicles, we're seeing a transition away from traditional fossil fuels to electrification, and in other areas too. From 2030 onwards, every new car sold in the UK will be electric or hybrid. Electric cars are undoubtedly the future of motoring, and at the time of writing there are already more than 1 million plug-in electric cars registered for UK roads, and this number is growing every day. Tools, for example domestic, gardening or agricultural equipment are also affected. There are more cordless power products available. So Creo 10 brings improved and refined tools to confidently manage your ECAD data and harnesses. Prior to Creo 10, all the cabling information within your designs was included in and amongst the standard Creo model tree, making it more of a challenge to decipher your design intent, particularly if it was in a model you've been sent. Creo 10 introduces a dedicated cable tree. This gives you the chance to switch to view specific aspects of your harness designs, just to view the cables, the connectors, etc. It gives you a much clearer representation of what you've got in your harness assembly and gives you the standard tree tools, search for example. Your tree settings are saved in the Creo user interface file, so it will be retained until you change them again. An exciting new feature in Creo 10 is one which potentially will save design teams large amounts of valuable time and give far more flexibility in collaborative work and non-duplication. Creo 10 allows you to split and then merge harnesses together. If for example you're working on a large harness, splitting it into two harnesses means that two engineers can work simultaneously on their respective part within the harness, and then simply merge them back together to create the required hole. This allows teams to be more efficient and the time to design is shortened. Creo 10 allows you to split the top level harness into multiple harnesses for manufacturing purposes or to use across several different harness designs, reusing and repurposing, saving time and keeping designs consistent. You also have the option to decide whether to make the split harness dependent or independent of the parent original harness. True control. Creo 9 brought you the ability to add solder masks to your PCB designs. Creo 10 also allows paste masks, clear visibility of the PCB design. Users can also set ECAD parameters when creating ECAD holes directly within the feature user interface, for example hole type, the plating style and the associativity of the hole itself, i.e. which part it's actually associated with. Also new is the ability to import IDX holes that are embedded within the components. Far more useful for those of you using Creo with Siemens Expedition. In Creo 9 the ergonomics capabilities were improved with more detailed manipulation of mannequins and some enhancements in safety analysis tools. And this continues in Creo 10. 
Focusing a lot on usability improvements, for example with the 3D dragger used to manipulate the mannequin, I can set specific dimensional values for movement, not just drag body parts around freehand. There are also improvements on how you measure distances on mannequins, i.e. the distance between specific points on limbs, for example. Extremely useful for working with any design that's intended for manual operation. Also improved is the reach capability with new reach envelopes. So now, for example, you can display the index finger, the second finger, as well as the thumb, and the reach envelope for the palm of the hand. The mannequin library itself is also updated. The mannequins are now treated as inseparable assemblies. So you actually only have one object per mannequin, much easier to manage. As well as the improvements made in Creo 9, where visual fields could be clearly visualized on screen, Creo 10 has added reflection analysis. So for example, you can see the visual field in a rear view mirror, even adjusting the angle of the mirror to update the required view. It's excellent for validating that you're conforming to certain safety regulations and standards. Every new version of Creo also brings refinements to the tools we use every day, productivity and usability improvements to make your days work easier and faster. With improvements in the model tree, users now have the quilt and body evolution tree, and some improvements in dragging and dropping items, retaining and simplifying the reorder and the restructure of the tree itself. In core modeling, there are some useful improvements within Sketcher. In Creo 9, we saw an improved UI for the project and offset command. This continues in Creo 10. You can now project or offset geometry as construction geometry, for example. There's also now the ability to select all curves in a feature. So you can specify that inside Sketcher as an input for your project or offset command. In Creo 10, simple holes support standard parameters and notes. Previously, these only worked with standard holes and patterns have some useful enhancements, mainly focused on multi-directional patterns or patterns of patterns and adding additional controls to their additional parameter information about the number of resulting patterns that are created. These can be used in an equation to help better control and update your patterns. With multi-body modeling, we see in Creo 10 a new combined split and trim option. So you can decide whether the split keeps or removes the affected body, much more useful and easier to manage. You can also decide whether the split body retains its original color or inherits the color from the body it's unioned with. Again, a small but really useful update. There are some useful new features in the surfacing tools, starting with warp. Firstly, the stretch tool is the ability to take your geometry and based on a certain direction, simply make it larger or smaller. Previously, this was done with a ratio value, e.g. times 1.5, whereas now you can set the stretch up to a reference, so you can stretch it up to a date and plane, for example, giving you better parametric control and better ability to define and control accurate and logical design intent into your models. There are also some improvements to the spine tool. You now have the ability to specify a target curve, allowing you to move your model from one curve to another, deforming your shape accordingly. In freestyle, users can now perform rotational symmetry, allowing you to take an object and rotate it about an axis a certain number of times. There are also some new features in the model-based definition sphere, giving users additional tools to better manage their model-based detailing. In Creo 10, there's now the ability to relate certain symbols or surface finishes to other annotations. So you can add a surface finish and then assign it to a different annotation. It will inherit the plane that the annotation is on, so it will place it on the same plane. Think of it as a grouping or stacking annotations on top of one another creating a logical and correct annotation set. There are also some improvements to the GD and T advisor as well, including some usability improvements and improved semantic behavior as it relates to general profile tolerance information. There's also improved compliance to both ASME and ISO standards. Easy tolerance has also seen some development. The stack up dialog box is updated, with the always useful undo and redo support included. There's improved visualization of your model being able to more clearly understand which parts within your model are being referenced. Simulation and generative design have also had some development. 
Crow's embedded ANSYS partnership agreement continues to give users industry-leading, firmly established FEA and CFD tools to ensure the designs meet requirements first time, making your work safer, quicker and higher quality. With ANSYS simulation in Creo 10, there's a new advanced extension. This will be focused mainly upon non-linear capabilities or more advanced capabilities. In this extension, you've also got support for non-linear materials. You also have combined multi-physics, which can support thermal and structural information and use cases of thermal expansion within the design process. In flow analysis, there are improvements in some of the graphics behavior and in the display quality of streamlines. And there's an easier workflow when saving post-processor settings. So whenever you configure how you want to post-process, the information previously that wasn't saved, and every time you wanted to view it, you had to reset it, it's now stored as part of the main project. Usefully, Creo Simulate now supports multi-bodies. It also allows you to define interfaces between different bodies, and even different materials for different bodies. So you can, for example, apply different heat loads to different bodies and have different mesh parameters for bodies as well. In generative design, the standout feature added in Grow 10 is rotational symmetry. You now have the ability to specify a rotation axis and specifying number of instances and have the system then go and solve a shape and create some geometry that has a rotational symmetry in it. Creo 10 introduces three new main beam lattice cells, including an elongated dodecahedron, typically used and approved for use within the medical industry. Also introduced are some fascinating features called oxetic cells, which are unique in their behavior. They actually have a negative Poisson ratio. So what that means is in a typical scenario, if you take a material and you apply a load to the top of the material, the sides will in most cases bulge outwards. If it's got a negative Poisson ratio, what happens is, as you push a load down from the top, the sides actually squash inwards. And this is really important for use cases where you're critically looking at energy absorption or fracture. And so finally, onto subtractive manufacturing. Over the last few releases, there have been some real developments in high-speed machining capabilities in Creo. In Creo 10, this path has continued has now added support for barrel tools and the introduction of two new finishing toolpaths, a wall and a floor finishing toolpath. So the fewer cut passes that need to be taken, reducing the amount of time it takes the machine, with smoother transitions between each of those cut passes. So you now have one toolpath for doing the walls and one toolpath for doing the floor. For multitask machining we've also done some work to improve the CL player. Introduced is a new CL player. So in a scenario where you're working multiple sequences and looking to synchronize those multiple sequences, you now have a new player that can show all the CL data for all of the paths that are being calculated or run at the same time. You can clearly step through the toolpath or the multiple toolpaths at the same time. You can see them graphically on the screen and find them in the CL player as well as you've got more tools in there for gauge checking and collision checking. And in addition, there are further enhancements, expanding the use of high-speed machining, making sure that you can be more productive, machining parts faster, whilst keeping extremely high surface quality and surface finishes. Creo 10 adds design for composites capabilities, as well as new electrification and ergonomics. Design engineers can use the usability and productivity improvements every day, helping to deliver better products faster. Model-based definition enhancements will increase quality and communication with production partners and downstream supply chain. And Creo 10 continues to add capabilities in terms of simulation-driven design and generative design to help you take your product development process to the next level. And finally, there are improvements in advanced manufacturing, including both additive and subtractive, to help you use the latest production capabilities. If 
you feel that Creo 10 could give you a design software solution that fits in with your requirements and future plans, get in touch with us here at Concurrent Engineering. We'll be pleased to discuss your ideas and assist with implementation and training to help you achieve your goals. Thank you again for your time today. We look forward to hearing from you soon.